How's it going, everyone? My name's Harrison Singer. I'm with Jamie Crancis, per usual, representing the Juice. And as we have uh, been just honestly so lucky, you know, lately to have some very, 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 very special guests. This one, I don't know, this one, this, this one, one could, could top them so far. That is for sure. We have a very, 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 very special guest with us today over Zoom. And that is Parson James. Parson, how's it going? It is good. It is good, good, good. How are you? We're good. We're good. Thank you. And what an Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I try my best, honestly. I mean, definitely someone who comes with a lot of hype, and rightfully so. You know, I we're we're, we're going to get into you know the humble beginnings from from the time you started and, and until now, and, and I'm definitely excited to hear you know your your story. I mean. I know you've been a broken record at this point. You've heard, oh, stole the show, it came out of the forefront. Yeah, whatever. But especially the Temple EP and, and a lot of your other music is fantastic. And then your journey has been really, really, really compelling to hear about, to read about. Um, oh, I can't wait to talk about it with you. Um, so I kind of wanted to, just starting there, what, what kind of... I know you said you were really, you know, outgoing and expressive. You laughed a lot as a kid, but uh, I was wondering, like, what was life like, kind of growing up in, uh, you know, in a small town in South Carolina? I know you said it's about like five thousand people in the town you grew up in. Like, what kind of kid were you? What, what was the environment like at school? You know, at home with friends? I was definitely like a, definitely a weird ass kid. Definitely like, um, <laughs> you know, I just never shut up. I was just like kind of chat, 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 chatty try to be a class clown and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, I never met a stranger. I was just like, all, you know, I was always like so open heart and like, just, I wanted to know everyone and I was curious and I was, you know, yeah, I was definitely like different as cliche as that sounds, but you know, I, I took notes really early cause just kind of from the moment that I was born, it was just, there's just so much chaos around me with, you know, my mom, and my dad, you know, you wouldn't think interracial relationships are a big deal, but there is just, it was such an uh, incredibly, you know, um, unfathomable thing for my mom's family or his family to understand. So, you know, they were there. My mom was on her own since she was 16. And I don't know, I, I think that, you know, between that and then my dad was, you know, unfortunately abusive with drugs and abusive domestically and that sort of stuff. And by the time I was like four years old or five, I just, I think I had my such like, I don't know, like spidey senses or my awareness was so high that like, I just was constantly checking. I was like, always like on alert, I guess. Um, and I always like, I, I know this now thinking back, like, I feel like I was always just trying to please people like, or make sure that nobody was, you know, didn't like me just because so much volatile stuff and family that abandoned you and that sort of thing starts to happen. Um, that I just naturally assumed that characteristic where I just needed like to be liked or whatever and wanted to be accepted. Um, and then, you know, I knew I was gay from such a young age, so like at least five or six. I can remember that. I can remember preschool. I can, you know, having those memories then of having a crush on my like best friend there. And, um, but I was smart enough to know that like, that wouldn't be okay to, you know, discuss or open up about even when I got, you know, back down into like middle school, I found myself super, 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 uh, I was playing like a big, like a, like a role. I was definitely like trying to just skirt on by, let me get through this damn, this place. And so I can get in and out and I don't want to disrupt anyone. I don't want anyone calling me names or guessing or assuming or so there's like a lot of fear, I guess, that I internalize and use as a weapon, I guess. Cause you know, I just use that to make friends and to like just fall into these circles and just play, play the game, I guess, which is, uh, I guess it's kind of like, sad to think about but I was some survival tactic I guess because you know, in that community it wasn't safe to kind of be open if you know it wasn't it wasn't really uh welcomed you know people play football and then that's kind of it you go to church right. play football and then <laughs> you know that's it and here I am this like mixed kid that sings that's gay <laughs> you know it was just uh it was interesting uh, but you know I, I left I left early I left at 17 so you know that was very important to me because I think I had overstayed my welcome in that place. Mm -hmm. um, and for me personally, like I couldn't have spent a another second there. Uh, you know, I had to go just let, let go and let it out and become who, you know, who I'm supposed to be, who I am. 
Well, that being said, I had, you know, you, you were kind of uh, until the end there when you said you don't really like to, you know, think back too much about it. You were, you're really eager to leave. I, my, my next question, you were leading into, you know, kind of growing up in, in, in the town's called Chura, right? South Carolina. So like you mentioned, it's very, there is a, you know, a predominant presence. You know, people live commonly around the church and spend a lot of time in the church growing up like you did. And you've been on record saying it wasn't the most tolerant or accepting environment. I'm wondering, you know, having grown up and I've heard you say you've slept, you know, used to sleep with um, a Bible under your pillow. And, and obviously it was, you know, religion was, was kind of just a given for you. And, and, and obviously, though, when you think about your idea, you, you've, who you've came in, who you've grown to be, you know, as, as, a, as a person and, and, and who you are, you know, sometimes it seems religion can, be, can, can conflict with, 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 your, with those values. I'm wondering if how, if, you know, it has, assuming it has, has, has your faith changed, you know, have you kind of your relationship with God per se, have you like reformed it, you know, kind of package it up and change it or how's that work? I mean, I just had to... Uh... I was just such a, like I said, curious kid. And I had so many questions that like, I could not like understand how the preacher was like saying, you know, it's, you're going to burn in hell for being gay or do this or whatever. But then like the preacher's cheating on his wife with his wife's sister, but then like, he can be forgiven. And I'm like, so I'm like, I had all these questions of like, how come they can do that? And I can't, you can't do that. Or like, you know, and I think that what happens in small communities like that, you know, they just, they, they build each other up or, you know, they're, they're in this bubble. They, they want to believe what they want to believe. And it's going to just, they, so they're, they're quite literally changing, <laughs> changing parts of, you know, the teachings or whatever, or, you know, yeah. to, to fit the narrative for them that makes them comfortable. So after being like preached at for so long, I just was like, look, I think that uh, religion to me, uh, you know, it's spirituality, faith, all that sort of, sort of stuff is, is for me within. So I had to like step back and like, you know, a fall in, you know, fall in love with myself and learn to love myself enough to kind of like feel, feel within that I was okay, regardless of what I've been like told for so long. And then just kind of decide what God and what, what spirituality really is. And like, and that for me is just like a very personal thing in relationship. I feel very spiritual connected to the universe. I feel spiritual and connected to nature and like all sorts of stuff. I'm not like a witch or anything. I just, you know, I feel I'm not like following a, this book that, you know, was thrown at my face for so long. Um, yeah, and, and I don't think that I would have gotten the opportunity to form my own opinion about it if I stayed there. And most people don't, like I'm dealing with a friend right now who's, you know, reaching out to me about their, their sibling going through like a lot of like, you know, religious stuff, like convinced that like they're going to hell for, you know, having sex before marriage or like what, like all this stuff that is just not healthy. Mm -hmm. uh you know so taking a step back in a breath and just forming your own personal relationship is i think very important that's what i've done and i you know I, it works for me absolutely that's great i mean i always feel like um you know it balance is always is, is a great thing you know and I, I was kind of um I was wondering too, like you, you, your June seventh is your birthday. You're a Gemini, so I was wondering how much that kind of factors into you know, I, and, and identifying you know self identity and, and and how you kind of would describe yourself. Yeah, um, I'm born on the same day as Prince. I always like to yeah. Say. <laughs> so um, definitely, look, I think that I'm not the biggest. Uh, I don't know much about astrology. I, I try my best, you know, living in LA, that's the first question people ask you. They're like, Hey, what do you do? What's your sign? You know, like right away. Um, uh, so I've kind of tapped into it and, you know, there is, you know, twin spirits in terms of the Gemini thing. And uh, I think that people all, all the time think that, Oh, that means that you're two faced or something, or it just means that you're like, yeah, that, but I think for me, it's a bit different. Like I am a performer, an entertainer that can, without, you know, without any hesitation, go on stage and, or go into a room and do my thing because I feel very comfortable and passionate about that. But then there's another side of me that is the most self-conscious, literally anxiety ridden, can't sleep like person. And I feel like that's such a crazy juxtaposition to have where social butterfly, I'm like social butterfly, but also like shaking in my boots to step into a room at the same time to talk to people. It's, it's, it's just a weird thing. If I'm doing my job, I'm comfortable if I'm like just walking into a social environment it's like you know so maybe those are my two sides I'm 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 guessing um also like I, I just am such an empathetic person that maybe like uh I haven't 
thought about it enough, but like maybe the second side is just that ability to tap into everyone else's like emotions and know how people are feeling like without even like asking or whatever and assuming all their problems. <laughs> In, you know, always trying to kind of distinct, you know, distinguish, you know, artist versus the, the art and the, and the human being behind all the art. Right. But I was curious, you know, as far as what's going into music making for you now and what kind of music you, you know, you're, you, you've kind of been creating lately in the place you're in when you're making it, you know, what's, what's the music making process been like? Is, is, and is it the same or different than, you know, I guess in times prior? Since uh, quarantine and stuff started, it's obviously been like a very um, different way of creating. Uh, when it all started, there was no access to studios and there was, you know, the, 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 all the agents, you know, got let go and all that sort of stuff. And so it was just kind of, I didn't know what was going to happen. Nobody knew, nobody had any answers. Most people still don't, but um, so yeah, it was just kind of like I was forced to be at home a lot. And for the longest time I used to early days, write by myself, like just hum and sit and like, just write without any instruments, just hear all the stuff in my head and just voice noted and, um, you know, just stuff came to me, but like after, you know, years and years of writing and all that sort of stuff, I just, I think I got burned out on that method of writing. So the studio really became this place that brought a lot of inspiration and stuff for me. So not being able to be there, it, it was hard at first because um, I was just forced to sit at home like everybody else. And, but what's good about that is that I like retapped into that, that old way of writing. Like I was, you know, I doubted myself as if like, can I even create ideas on my own anymore? And, um, without it being in a room, you know, with a producer or a musician. And um, it started happening and I started just like, you know, getting back to like humming and, you know, getting, you know, these words and ideas and then, you know, stories. And then I'm just like writing every morning. And then um, then at a certain point, there's this one producer who I worked with for High Tide, Low Tide, who was like, look, I'm, I'm ready to, I'm ready to, to see, to, to, to open the studio if you're comfortable, then I'm down to work. And uh, so he's been the only person I really worked with this whole entire time. And our first day we ever met actually, um, cause he's a friend of a manager's, my manager. First day we met, we wrote High Tide, Low Tide because I had been talking about this guy that I was seeing in the ocean and all this stuff. And um, I had like very specific ideas um, about what the production and drums should sound like, the, what the guitar should feel like. Uh, you know, I got to down to the point where I was like, the guitar should feel like I'm crying at the beach. So like, I, I just, I think for this, creative process and just being it, it, I've been more inspired than ever especially being more involved on the production side usually I'm just like here's we're, we're doing the song and production I have like a few notes or whatever but like actively sitting there and like picking through like drums and picking through all the sounds and the you know matching instrument to emotion in such a specific way um it's been has been great so I think that I've been way more inspired than ever and everything is just feels clear and cohesive and concise and I think that that's also because when you're like forced to just work with one person, really, we, we, we couldn't really step outside of our bubble. Um, sharing all these stories that are so personal and they, that, that become songs, you just get really comfortable. And it's just like second nature to just walk in that room and just, you know, you kind of don't even have to say much. You, you, you can just, just pour it out because um, there's a comfort level there. So I, I think I've been way more inspired and I think that I'm proud of myself for the music side, the musicality and the, the instrumentation and stuff. Yeah, the, the drums on High Tide, Low Tide get me every single time. Really? <laughs> I was listening to so much Mark Ronson and Amy Winehouse and I was like, look, we have to just capture this, you know, this has to feel just like, you know, I want it to feel like a vinyl record, but I also want it to feel like it's 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 of the moment as well. So, I mean, we, we, we combed over those drums for so long. <laughs> I can tell, I can tell. So um, you started off um, at RCA, obviously a major label, and now you're with 12th Tone, which is independent. Um, so like it, throughout all those experiences, what, what would you say or what comes to mind, like um, one piece of advice from whether it was a personal manager of your own, um, a, a friend in the industry, another artist, maybe like yeah. one else that has stuck with you? I think that the most valuable piece of information that has, that took me the longest to actually receive um, and process and actually utilize is very simple. And it's um, do not compare yourself to others around you. And that can apply to everyday life, of course. But when you're in a music industry, it may not make sense that you've worked for seven years and you haven't gotten 
what you'd think you should get yet. And then one person comes and then they accidentally get a hit that next day or something like that. And it's just like, I used to be so, uh, the, 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 the beauty and the curse of me having my song with Kaigo was that it was my first thing I ever released and it was majorly successful from the jump, right? And then after that, it's like, well, why isn't everything else as successful as this? Like why, you know, and, and it starts to become confusing. And why does that person have, you know, that? And why does her manager do that or his manager do that? You know, whatever. And all it does is just take you backwards, backwards, backwards. Cause you're not focusing on, you're not focusing on yourself or your work anymore. You're, you're, you're totally just wrapped up. And then you, then it gets confusing. Cause you, you might try to like, Oh, well, that sounds working for them. I'm going to try to do something like that. Or, so, and you're not going to, it's not going to work that way. And everyone's journey is so different and it, everyone, it takes different times for every person to get to A, B, C or wherever. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I got the comparison thing from uh, one of the label heads at my first label at RCA. And it was again, so simple. And I was just like, well, it's easier said than done. But once I started like actually sitting back and focusing on myself, you know, then, you know, nobody can do what nobody d does what I do. I, I can't do what they do. And, you know, we're all in our like, you know, respective paths. And that's you, you just got to put your head down, focus and work. And remember that you're doing it for the love of music. What a crazy, crazy job that you get to have, you know, <laughs> like to, to make music for a living and share, share art with the world, you know, so. Absolutely. Um, I, uh, I, 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 yeah, I mean, last question I had was, you know, Music wise, um, is there something, you know, the, the fans you know, should be looking forward to, you know, anytime soon or in, you know, within any time frame? Yeah. So there's something, there's an, there's, there's another single coming. It's an extension of High Tide. So I can't say much of it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so there's that. And that's in the next few weeks. And then uh, after that, we're I'm putting out another single. And then ultimately we're coming into two EPs that will form into an album. So um the, the eps are conceptual and it's i'm very excited to tell the story in the way that i'm going to be able to tell it uh i can't say much i mean the title alone is so good and i'm just i'm just i'm stoked uh and i think that for me what's most important is to keep the consistency and uh to keep delivering because there's so much that i've been sitting on and it's almost like i'm gonna combust like if i don't get this stuff out so uh, yeah, so sooner than sooner than later, like very soon is the special thing that's going to come. And then mm -hmm. then after that, it'll just keep on ringing. <laughs> oh, well, I'm looking, looking forward to that for sure. Um, and uh, on a parting note is, is, you know, you want to drop your show, your socials where, you know, fans should be able to find you and, and keep up with what you're up to. Yes. So Instagram, I'm at I am Parson James. Twitter, I'm at Parson James. Facebook, if we're using Facebook, <laughs> Parson James official. And uh, yeah, you know, keep up with me on Instagram. I'm very active um, and I'm seeing all, all the people just sending, you know, videos of themselves playing high tide and all that sort of stuff. But I love to see it and I always respond. So um, all the love is really, really, really appreci appreciated. I'm grateful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you very, very, very much for, for taking the time. It was, it was an honor to, you know, have any time at all to sit down and, and, and speak with you. So thank you uh, for thank that. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank, thank you. you for taking the time.